Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Well, today I'm on a stubble field, it's fresh stubble, so I just wanted to go through a few thoughts, a few ideas on how to better combat fresh stubble, because going through it with a metal detector when it's just been cut is a difficult task. But I think I'm gonna be using something like the gold field mode and just try and work slightly above the stubble and see if we have any luck. Let's go. Come. Let's start off with my original plan, which is the Goldfield program. Now, on the Deus 2, you've got two choices, Goldfield and Relic program. They both use the same sort of platform, but the Goldfield uses the higher frequencies. So I'm kind of thinking small hammered coins, small Roman coins, some lovely bits of foil, some nice ring pulls. They're all going to come under the higher frequency bracket, really, on farmland. So, anyway, that's my choice. I'm going to go with the Goldfield program and um, just show you what I'm going to do here. Right, let's go through the settings. Disc IAR. I turn it up to five. Sensitivity, leave that. Frequency max, 40. Iron volume, seven. I like to have that at 10. Reactivity, I'm going to keep that at two. I've got a little tip or two regarding reactivity. Audio response, three. Threshold, now I like to use a threshold in the background. Some people don't, but I just prefer it that way. So I'm going to turn that up. If you were using headphones, you probably only need it at something like four because I'm using the audio speaker. I'm going to go maximum 20. Can you hear that in the background? And that's it. That's my Goldfield program. Obviously, that's your iron. Now, if you didn't have the disc IAR on, every target would sound the same. So, disc IAR, I'll run at maximum. And also, what I'm going to do here is put the big numbers on by pressing these two buttons at the same time. And that will give us the bigger numbers. There you go. As always with my videos, there's no adverts for the first week. So those of you who are subscribed, you'll get an early notification so you can watch the videos without adverts. Subscribe if you want. If I was you, I wouldn't bother. And also, I just want to point out that it's a technical video. I don't think there's going to be any majorly great finds, but you never know. So anything found is really for demonstration purposes. And I think this particular video is probably going to be more about the technical side of it. So I hope you can appreciate that it's not all about finding treasure. Sometimes it's getting the best out of your machine. They can be the most useful videos, can't they? Because we're using disc IAR, we've got that low grunt for the iron. And we can work pretty much above the stubble because this is probably the most punchy, punchy program you've got on the Deus 2, Deus 1, even the ORX. Is it worth ground balancing? Well, to be fair with you, I have ground balance and it's made the machine a, a little bit chirpy. So I think just stick to your default ground balance. If you do make a ground balance and you get it wrong, all you have to do is just go into GB, this is with a Deus 2, and hit the plus button and that would default back to the standard ground balance, which I think is about 87, which is perfect for most places. Zero, zero. No good, don't dig it. We really want to be digging numbers mm, 27 and above. G 
you know what? I'm sure that dog is a Malinois. It looked like a German Shepherd when I first got him, but now his facial features, his body mass, everything screams Malinois. Now the Malinois is a part of the Belgian Shepherd family, whereas Missy here, she's a German Shepherd. Well, actually she's not, she's a Bohemian Shepherd originating from the Czech Republic. So Miroslav Peber and all the guys will be familiar with this style of German Shepherd. But the Malinois were a very much slighter, although he looks like a racehorse at eight months. Look at the size of him. They're very slight, so they can strap them to their back and parachute out of planes with them. So what does having a Malinois or a possible Malinois mean to me? Basically, it means I've got my flipping work cut out. So, a lot of you dog owners out there have probably been through the same as what I'm going through. Jumping around a bit. Between sort of eight months and 18 months, they reach what is called the teenage stage, which they become very stubborn and very challenging and it can be very very difficult as a dog owner especially a breed like a shepherd malinois something like that because they're a very driven breed but um, we had the same with missy you know when she was younger she was a bit of a sod but she calmed down at sort of just under two years old and now she's a fantastic dog hope we're going to get the same with this one See, I'm above the stubble and I'm getting 25 coming up. Which is possibly coke. If you wonder why I'm digging like an idiot, my spade is on the other side of my car. So let's do this one by hand and then we go and get the spade. I'm sure it's a piece of coke. Look, there it is. But a really, really strong signal. One thing worth um, just remembering when you're digging coke, I know some of you guys have your fields full of coke and it drives you mad, but if you're digging coke, you're not missing those tiny little gold quarter status perhaps and those tiny bits of jewellery because they tend to come in sometimes around this number so you need to be really really careful. I would reject coke if my fields were full of it but if they're not full of it I don't mind digging a little bit of it that's for sure. I think I'm right in saying I believe in the Netherlands some of their ancient coins register below coke so can you imagine looking for those? That's going to be a tough task. Quite a deep one actually, it's going down quite well. No, MI6 time. So we're straight down. moving it around, whatever it is, it's in my hand. Let's have a look, see what we got here. Oh, it's a coin, look, a bit battered. There you go. He's only gone and rolled in foxes crap. Now he stinks. Never work with children and animals. You're all right. It's just Boney Tony there. Oi, oi. 
no remorse whatsoever. Okay, so now I'm on the heavier stubble. What adjustments can I make to sort of bring the ground a little bit closer to the coil? Well, I think I can probably go up one on the audio response. Let's go up on the audio response one just to make it a little bit more sparkier, but raising the audio response, it enhances the signals, but it also enhances the noises from the ground. But can you see what I'm doing? Because I'm, I'm above the stubble, I'm still hearing the iron. It's enhanced the target. It's just made it a little bit brighter. So look at that, 70. Come off it. Massive piece of iron there. Don't forget that disc IAR isn't a complete, a completely reliable iron rejection. You have to use your, your noddle a little bit just to make some of the decisions that the machine can't make. Again, that's that zero zero again with such a strong signal. Now the zero zero coming up is kind of a rock. You can just eliminate that just by turning the notch on one. See, if you're getting pestered by that zero zero, there's a really easy way to get rid of that because it gives a good signal. Just go into menu, disc IAR, expert, and you'll see notch. Just press the plus button. So notch is on, but it's zero, 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 zero. And for some reason, it totally eliminates that zero, zero. Still getting positive numbers. So I'm gonna trust the machine here and dig that one out. But the idea of this video is really just to give you guys another option, another something to think about. A lot of people use something like the Goldfield program they have done on their Deus One and ORX and thought, nah, I don't like that. I'm going back to my usual program, but it's another style of detecting. It's almost like old school style with the threshold and things like that. And I think if you spend a little time just getting your ear into it, it's a deadly program. It really is worth um, going for, but it's a confidence thing, isn't it? You all have your favorite programs and you stick to them, which I get that, but sometimes it pays just to have a little switch around. But obviously it's not about finding stuff today, really, is it? It's more about finding a solution for the stubble. The fines have come, perhaps we're on a better bit of land. It was a lovely sound, wasn't it? Real screamer. Nope, I've thrown it away, whatever it was. Do you know what? I'm just going to get the pinpoint probe on this. There it is. What was it, a piece of iron, do you think? No idea what that is. Ah! Oh. Just see if I can focus on that. There you go, look. That is... the key. Let's just have a quick talk about search coils. Now, what do you think is going to be the best search coil for going through stubble? You hear so many people say, oh, elliptical search call is gonna be the best for stubble, which I don't think it will be because you've got a point on the front and a point at the back. So every time that elliptical coil point hits stubble, it's gonna twist the coil. So is a bigger, something like a 13 inch coil better for stubble where you can perhaps glide across it a bit easier. The weight of the coil may lay the stubble over a little bit easier as well. So. 
it really is a difficult one to know what coil to use. I suppose it's all down to personal preference, but the nine inch coil on the XP Deus 2 is absolutely fine for, for me because I tend to avoid stubble as much as I can. But maybe worth experimenting with the bigger coil. Certainly not the elliptical. I don't think that's going to be a choice because it hasn't got the overall depth the round coils have got because it's a specialist coil. So by lifting it above the stubble, you're not going to give yourself any advantages there at all. And as I said, trying to get in between the stubble, because it's elliptical and pointed, it's going to twist. Now, here's an invention if anyone wants to get to the drawing board. If you had an elliptical coil on its side, so the points were either side, I think that'd be a brilliant stubble coil because that will get in between it. Anyway, perhaps someone's already invented that. Who knows? Three. Look at that. You're never going to miss that, are you? That ah, wasn't very deep. Still a positive signal, though. What is it, miss? What do you think? Hmm, don't know. What do you think there? Piece of rubbish, I think. But if that had been a small coin, we'd have had that. That would have been no trouble at all. Right, get off my search coil. Get off. Oh. There you go. Now off. Off, go on, off, off, off. See, 25. Should be coke, shouldn't it? Should be coke. But it's such a strong signal. I've really got to have a go at that. Let's go to the general program and give that signal a try. Out the way, Missy, please. Wow. It is Coke. Such a strong signal, isn't it? Such a strong signal. See, this is what I'm trying to say. If you get such a punchy signal on such a low conductor like Coke, you've just given yourself the best chances possible of finding a small hammered coin, a small Roman coin, piece of jewellery, whatever it might be. So don't just dig Coke and think, mm, I don't know about that. Think about, wow, a low conductive target and it smashed it. Here's an interesting one, look. 25. 26, 27, 29, 30. So we're just bouncing out of that Coke range at the moment. Still could be Coke, but it's just, just out of it, just bouncing around the 30. Some Coke does come up at about 30, but so does some little gold Celtic quarter staters. Oh look, it wasn't Coke, it was some really, really thin foil. Really thin foil look. So that was a good call. Above the stubble. I think what this program does, it gives you the first indication, the first shout above the stubble. And then of course you can move a little bit closer to it. General program. Still gets it, but above the stubble, mm, it's really, really quiet, isn't it? It's just this Goldfield program has just got that, that extra punch. Nice bit of soil. There it is. There's a piece of aluminium, but 
it out. Piece of aluminium, but quite a deep piece of aluminium. Out. Ah, oh, it's driving me mad, this dog. Well, that's it, guys. I hope that's given you some ideas on what to do when searching stubble. I think the gold field is the answer. So what have I personally learnt today? Well, I can honestly say, never work with stubble or animals because they're both a massive pain in the arse. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.